Thank you to Logitech for sponsoring today's video. And that's why I need to add this disclaimer for legal reasons. But as with anything I show on this channel, I will always give you my fully honest thoughts. Logitech has recently released the MX Creative Console, a two-piece hardware device that promises quicker editing and integrates deeply into professional software. It's also fully customizable, so when you're not using it for professional software, you can press the I'm sad button for when you're sad. I'm gonna show you later what that does. At first, I wanted to make a video simply about my editing process with this device, but then I realized I'm not out here to make some basic app videos. I'm here to ask the big questions. Why do people say pineapple doesn't belong on pizza even though it's obviously the best. And is it time we rethought the way we edit photos? Logitech thinks it is. To be fully honest, I was skeptical about this device at first because there have been several companies over the past years that have tried to make specialized photo editing hardware and it never seemed to take off. But then I saw that you can make a button that just writes the words pay the invoice damn it over and over again and then I realized this thing is probably going to end up making me money. Ever since I've gotten this button, catching up on emails has never taken me more than a minute. The idea of having specialized hardware controls to edit photos or videos is just super interesting to me. YouTube is not my full-time job. I'm actually a computer science student and I've taken several courses that focus on human-computer interaction, so this kind of thing just tickles my brain. You might be thinking, I have a keyboard and a mouse, why would I change anything? Well, when people were manipulating photos in a darkroom back in the day, none of them would have thought, you know what would make this better? If I had all the letters of the alphabet below my left hand and my right hand firmly grasping a plastic pointing brick. Nowadays, of course, we're used to it and don't question it, but just because we're used to something does not mean it's the most natural or the most efficient. That's why I'm glad there are people out there rethinking the way we work. Like this guy who turned Bop It into a video game controller and is now playing Smash Bros with it. Okay, hopefully the people over at Logitech use their time more wisely when thinking about these things, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily our bad approaches, because once you throw out the idea of the mouse and the keyboard, and just think about what is the best way to tell the software what I want to do, all bets are off. And it's an important question to ask. After all, we probably all spend a crazy amount of time at our desks just interacting with software. I have the tendency to go very spray and pray when I'm traveling and then I get back and realize, great, now I have to edit 7,000 photos and my friends and family don't get to see me for the next six weeks or so. And when I finally emerge from my editing hole, I can only speak in Lightroom settings. That's how I accidentally got highlights when I went to get a haircut two years ago. I actually bought a dedicated editing device a while back, the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. I'm a big fan of DaVinci Resolve and I thought this might be a great way to enhance my workflow. And honestly, it could be. The controls feel great, using a big wheel to scroll through your timeline feels very natural and there are loads of buttons. But most of the time, I don't use it because I don't need the majority of the buttons it has and there are no options to customize it for my needs. With the MX Creative Console, Logitech took a very different approach. Customization over everything. It consists of two parts the keypad and the dial pad. The keypad has nine fully customizable buttons that each have a small screen and with these two buttons on the bottom you can navigate through multiple pages. The dial pad has this big main dial, this roller on the top right, as well as another four customizable buttons. The interesting thing about these two devices is not only that you can map basically any function to any button, but that they are context aware. Depending on which application you're in, you can have a totally different set of functions. And even depending on where you are within the application, it can change. For example, I'm here in Lightroom in the library mode, and if I go into develop mode, I can get a totally different set of functions. Logitech have closely worked together with Adobe to integrate well into the creative cloud. That's probably the only way you can make a device like this work, if you can actually integrate really deep into the software. When you buy the MX Creative Console, you get three months of the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription for free. That makes this device a lot more enticing, because it costs 230 euro, which might be a bit steep for some people, but a three month Creative Cloud subscription already is almost 200 bucks. Because they are tightly working together with Adobe, it already comes pre-configured with profiles for their application, so you can get started right out of the box. But of course, you can customize these however you want, which I did. So let's head into Lightroom and edit a few photos, and I'll show you how I've got my Creative Console set up, because there are loads of very cool things you can do, including some pretty complex automations. What's interesting to me is that in a lot of the marketing material from Logitech, they have the MX Creative Console like to the left of the keyboard, so like for using them in tandem, which <laughs> makes sense, but for Lightroom, 
I preferred much more to have these two stand alone. So not even touching the keyboard, just one hand on the keypad and one hand on the dial pad. It's super quick. Okay, I'm here in Lightroom as you can see and I'm in the library mode. So we have an overview of all of the images here and I can just cycle between them with the main dial here. But if I want to edit one of them, I can just hit develop mode here. As you can see, I have a bunch of custom buttons here for my favorite Lightroom presets. In the Logi Options Plus software, you can actually just map whatever preset in Lightroom to one of the buttons. I'm just gonna go with the 800T preset, which is from an unreleased preset pack, Analog Vibes Volume 2, which is gonna come very soon. Okay, you can see I've selected that, but it is pretty dark. So let's go over here and increase the exposure. When I hit that, you can see it gets highlighted. And now I can turn the dial and increase the exposure. Maybe like that. Yeah. And maybe increase the shadows a bit as well. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. And maybe the temperature give it a little bit of warmth. Yeah. And more grain, of course, because grain is always good. And increase the grain size. Yeah. That's pretty good. Maybe, maybe bring down the highlights a bit more. Yeah, that's good. With these two buttons on the top left of the dial pad, you can undo and redo. And with this roller, you can zoom in. It goes through the different zoom levels in Lightroom then. This button down here is really interesting because this opens the actions ring, which is basically just another context menu, which gives you even more possibility for yeah, custom shortcuts. For example, I can hover over the exposure setting here and using my scroll wheel on the mouse, I can increase or decrease the exposure. But yeah, you can fully customize this ring in the software. One thing that really speeds up my workflow is copying the develop settings, moving over to the next image with the dial pad and just pasting them. And I've basically done the same thing, though the exposure is a bit different. So I'm just gonna correct that really quickly. Yeah, that should be pretty good. And what I also always do is flag the images as picked, which yeah, just are halfway good. <laughs> And you can see later on that we can do a lot more with that. Okay, moving on to our next image. I'm just going to go with the bright dynamic range preset because that always works really well for these images. This preset is from my Cinematic Street Essentials Lightroom presets. If you're interested in some really nice Lightroom presets and you want to support my channel, then I'm going to leave a heavy discount link in the description. Okay, we're just going to increase the exposure here. I'm just going to give it like a bunch of dynamic range. Maybe decrease the highlights a fair bit and just crank the shadows. Yeah, okay, just make it really bright. Just give it that like pastel, color negative, overexposed look. Yeah, like that. And maybe crank the saturation a bit. Yeah, okay, maybe that's a bit much. Like eight, maybe? Yeah, that's good. Okay, and just add a bit of grain, maybe just like a little bit. Yeah, I think that's good. And what I'm going to do now is just copy this again, move over to the next image, which is very similar from the same spot and just paste that. Maybe yeah, decrease the exposure a little bit. And that's already it. This one is really interesting because it's an infrared image and infrared images are always a bit of a pain in my butt. But with the Creative Console, we can actually automate a lot of what always took me ages to do. The first thing we need to do is apply the infrared profile for this infrared camera, which you always have to do, and then select the white balance. You always have to do this manually. Unfortunately, I'm just gonna select a white part on the clouds here. And what I'm gonna do now is hit this button. This is a multi-action that opens up Photoshop, does the conversion for me, swaps two color channels, and then goes back into Lightroom and does that within seconds. That's a really big deal because when you do this manually, it takes ages, especially if you have to do it on like hundreds of images. I came back from Japan with like 2000 infrared images. So going from like a minute per image to just a couple of seconds on this process is a huge deal. <laughs> but what I can do here is just hit this one button and then it'll open Photoshop or open the image in Photoshop, then do the conversion automatically and we're already back. And now it takes a bit, yeah, and there it is. Yeah, it, it always takes like a couple of seconds for Photoshop to save the file and then get it back into Lightroom. But yeah, that went so quick and I literally didn't have to do anything. So this is a huge, huge step up. And now I just hit the infrared punch preset, which you can also download on my store for completely free. And we're already done. Instead of doing all of this manually, I just pressed three buttons and that's it. Okay, moving on to the next image, I'm gonna use the bright and contrasty preset for this one. Let's maybe take out a bit of the highlights and give it more in the shadows and just increase the exposure overall a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe increase the blacks because they are a bit dark. And I think that's already pretty good. I think I don't have to do anything else. 
Yeah, it's that easy. <laughs> and now I'm gonna flag this as picked and go back into the library view. And now that we're in the library view, we can do some stuff like give these images star ratings. Like this one, I'm just gonna give five stars because it's a certified banger. And yeah, maybe just also pick this one because I usually never use the star ratings. I don't know, I just flag every image that I like and yeah. <laughs> but it gets really interesting when you start building yourself custom actions. For example, here I have one to export all picked images. So when I hit this, you, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. It just sorts by all picked images, exports those to a specified folder and then unfilters them again. So I'm just gonna hit that. You can see it takes them, exports them. You can see the export on the top left and we're done. Yeah. You might be thinking it would take ages to get used to something like this, but honestly, it took me like 10 minutes. Building physical devices to control software is really tricky because when you build it exactly for one piece of software, it works great for exactly that one piece of software and the rest of the time it's yeah, pretty useless. But if you build it too general, you can of course use it in many different situations, though you might be grabbing for your mouse and keyboard all the time when you want to do specific things. The MX Creative Console finds a really good sweet spot, and that's mainly because it allows for so many different ways to customize it. The integration into Lightroom and Photoshop is awesome, and the fact that you can build pretty complicated automations in the Logi Options Plus software makes it even better. Like this button that executes a custom script I wrote to post random conspiracy theories to Facebook, you know just to fit in. The best part about the Creative Console, in my opinion, is the versatility. Due to the very compact size, you can use it in tandem with a keyboard and mouse, or just prop the keypad up on its included stand and use it for some helpful shortcuts. But despite the compact size, you can still use it standalone, as I like to do in Lightroom, because you can make loads of pages on the keypad and additionally have the action ring, giving me, honestly, more space for shortcuts than I know what to do with. The software for configuring the MX Creative Console gives you loads of functionality, but still needs a bit of polish, because there are some bugs here and there. Though it's only been out for about a month, and despite it being such a new product, there already are loads of really helpful shortcuts and automations you can build, which I've categorized into five levels. Media controls and launching applications from the keypad is helpful, but pretty basic. I'd say that's level one. Binding certain shortcuts for starting a screen recording or putting your computer to sleep will save you time, but are still pretty basic. I'd say that's like level two. I also have this stay awake shortcut that prevents my Mac from going to sleep automatically for the next hour. That's really helpful when you're uploading big files. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on university lectures. I still fall asleep every time. Then of course there are the application plugins that allow you to do specific actions in an application like I showed you here with Lightroom. There is a marketplace with a bunch of plugins for different software already, like OBS where you can have shortcuts for changing scenes or audio inputs. That's level three, I would say. But where things get really interesting is when you build shortcuts and automations that are just super custom to you, like the multi-action I showed you earlier for converting infrared images. Or this multi-action I made that opens up my FTP software and automatically connects to my file server that hosts my photo and video archive. I'd call these super custom automations level 4. In level 5, there actually is only a single button. It's the button for when you're feeling sad. Pressing it opens up a video by some Australian guy cracking whips in tune to Cotton Eye Joe. But there's copyrighted music, so I'm just gonna stop this video here.